Never Forget a Name or Face by Dominic O'Brien. How many times have you been introduced to somebody only to find that a minute or so later their name has been mysteriously erased from your memory? Embarrassing, isn't it? I too used to have this problem remembering names and any length of time, for any length of time. And yet now I regularly give presentations where I'm introduced to 80 to 90 or 100 or more people just once. And after which I'm able to recall in real life not only their first names, but also their surnames too. How do you do it, they ask? Well, in this book, I'll reveal exactly how I do it, sharing you with the techniques that will help you to never again forget a person's name or face. The methods are tried and tested. They were designed for competition, and they've helped me become the world memory champion eight times. But don't worry, you don't have to be a memory champion to master memorizing names and faces. After a little practice, you'll probably wonder why you used to find it so difficult. I hope you enjoy this learning and the technique in the book. Be sure to practice them all on your friends and colleagues, socially or in the workplace. Before you know it, they'll be asking you, wow, how do you do it? Dominic O'Brien. There's going to be symbols used in this book. Question mark is for a memory technique. Exclamation is memory wisdom. And a check mark is memory in action. Why do we have such difficulty remembering names and faces? The number one complaint that people make to me about their memories is their inability to match names to faces. Actually, we have a very good, we're very good at remembering faces. It's recalling their names that go with them that give us our trouble. This is because as our species evolves, we needed to be able to recognize immediately who are our friends and who are our enemies to ensure that we didn't run into any trouble. The ability to remember a name, on the other hand, is a skill that we have needed to acquire only recently, and our brains have not yet developed particularly the mechanism that you can match names to faces automatically. Let me prove to you how instinctively good you are at remembering faces. On these two pages, you'll find nine faces. Look at each one of them briefly, and then turn over to the next page. Check and memory in action. Easy, wasn't it? Research shows that we are better at remembering images when it comes to associations with them. In 1974, scientists found that the volunteers were asked not only to look at faces, but also to assess the qualities they thought were faces the faces showed. For example, kindness in a face, honesty in a face, and so on. The volunteers' ability to remember those faces was enhanced. What's in a name? Let's now look at names. Whereas in the past, people had names associated with the characters or trade. For example, Fred, Full of Love, or Bob the Baker, which were easy to remember today. We often find ourselves having to remember more challenging names from all, the over, from all over the world. That suggests no obvious link with the person. In other words, our names no longer describe, say, our personality or our profession. This means we need to create an artificial link, a link between the person and their name. How? Well, to create an association, we need to use our imagination, and to make an association stick, we need a location, association, imagination, and a location are my three keys to a better memory. Location, association, imagination, and location are my three keys to better memory. Time to remember. Our ability to remember is our influence by many factors, such as how tired we are, whether or not we've been eating, even what time of the day it is. Research has shown that for most of us, the best time to perform memory tasks is during the mid to late morning, and the worst time is for the hour immediately after lunch. Placing people. Imagine you are out walking when you see someone vaguely familiar coming towards you. You whack your brains to remember their name, but no matter how hard you try, you just cannot place them. The key to solving this problem in the word is the place, because once you can recall the location where you met, the name will come back to you in a flash. So picture the person in the location that you met them. Names and places. I realized I could exploit our instinct to link a person with a place by associating each new person I met with a location that, I, that reminded me of their name. I call this method names and places. The method names and places. For example, if I'm introduced to somebody called Tony, I might imagine him standing outside a Prime Minister Tony Blair's residence at 10 Downing Street. In this way, I'm taking Tony I've just met outside of the surroundings in a transportation, transporting him to a place that will trigger his name. Of course, the place needn't be a famous one. Say I met someone called Peggy, and the first name for her name conjures up a line of the clothes pegs hanging on the wash line in my garden. So I, in, so I envisage 
Peggy there, pegging and washing. Now I'd like you to try your hand at names and places. Link, a, link each of the following five names with a location that helps you remember the name. Don, Gemma, Sydney, Carol, and James. How did you get on? Remember a location to the names. How well did you get on? You could, for example, have linked Don to tennis courts and Wibbledon at Wibbledon, Gemma to jewelry stores, Sydney to the Opera House in Australia, the city of Sydney, Carol to the local church, which holds a Carol service every Christmas, and James to your gym, like Jim, James. Returning to Tony, let's extend the link to include his surname, which is Ransom. This name makes me think of Ransom Money, and so I visualize Tony outside of 10 Downing Street as before, but now clutching a bag of money, whereas before we simply link the first name with the place. We extend the association by linking the person also with an object or an action representing the surname. Whatever the surname is, try to think of an action. Let's now take the other example involving Peggy. Her surname is Harper. So I now am thinking immediately of Peggy pegging out harps on the clothesline. Now it's your turn to link in some surname below. I've added surnames to the last of the five four names you previously linked to locations. There are Don Weatherby, Gemma Russell, Sidney Sanders, Carol Railton, and James Wigmore. How well did you get on? Here's a couple of examples. You could link Don's surname, Weatherby, to a tennis court in Wimbledon by imagining rain stopping play by bad weather. Or if you could link a Gemma's surname, Russell, as thinking of her wrapping of jewelry and tissue paper that rustles and so on. Repeat the name. Once you've been introduced to somebody, try to use their name once or twice in the conversation together. By repeating their name, you are helping to consolidate it in your memory and the person you are having just met will feel flattered that you find them interesting enough to remember their name. Looks familiar. In this method, you link the persons whose name you wish to memorize with someone familiar. They could be a famous person, say a movie star or a singer, or they could be a relative or a friend. Resemblance can be slight or even strong. Important thing is that your brain associates your new acquaintance with the familiar person. Here's now. Here's how it works. Let's say you've just met Ted, who reminds you of a golfer. Tiger Woods. Your brain immediately links Ted with Tiger. Next, you need to locate Ted mentally in a place that you would normally associate with Tiger Woods. Where else but a golf course? You now have a location to which you put him. Finally, you need to link Ted's name to the golf course by thinking up a suitable image. How about a teddy bear? So, the way to remember Ted is to form an association with someone familiar, Tiger Woods, the person to someone familiar, Tiger Woods, then... Anchor him to a location linked to Tiger Woods. Anchor him to a location linked to Tiger Woods, a golf course. And then use your imagination, your imagination to depict Ted in a way that conjures up his name as Ted Teddy Bear. Try this technique to remember the names of the next five people you meet. Let's now apply the same principle to Ted's surname. We have already anchored him to location the golf course and depicted him into a way that conjures up his name as Teddy Bear. Now we are going to introduce his surname, which is Ford. Ted Ford. So we imagine the Teddy Bear on the golf course as before, but this time we envision him sitting in a Ford car. In this way, we have included his surname simply by adding in an extra association, in this case, the car. Ted Ford. Let's look at another example. This time you are introduced to new business acquaintances called Ella Poole, who reminds you of the movie star Meryl Streep. You start off by imagining Ella in a place that associates with Meryl Streep, a film set. Then you need to image and anchor 
the name to the location. The name Ella sounds like a prefix elephant. So you visualize an elephant charging around the film set, generally causing havoc and knocking over lights and cameras and so on. Now you are going to introduce Ella's surname, which is Poole. So you imagine the elephant on the film set as before, and then the in, and then you envisage envisage it plunging into a nearby swimming pool. So again, you have included the surname by including an extra link to the swimming pool. First is best. When making associations, always stick with the first image that comes to your mind, no matter how absurd the mental picture you may seem to you on later reflection. Your brain's initial reaction is intuitive. The imagine... The image that first comes to the mind is the one that you are most likely going to recall automatically. Memory music. Memory music. Recent research suggests that listening to classical music, especially Mozart, can aid memory recall. Try it yourself. Put on some Mozart or other classical music and memorize 12 faces from the photos. With this memory names, repeat to another set of photos, but this time in silence. Then compare the results. What's my line? What's my line? What if you meet somebody who just doesn't resemble anybody familiar? Then you try What's My Line, a technique that involves using your imagination to guess what the person might do for a living. Don't try to be accurate or instinctive. Just look at the face and then decide that they are, and then say, an artist or a bank manager or anything else that comes to mind. That's What's My Line. Let us assume that you meet Celia, who links looks like a lawyer. The next step, you put her in a suitable setting, and then the first place that springs to your mind is a courtroom. Next, you need to bring your imagination into play again and link her name to the location. So, as you imagine Celia holding a document that's an official-looking seal, the word that sounds like the part of the first name, Celia, at the bottom. Once this association is stored in your mind, every time you meet Celia, the imagine, the image will be triggered and you will automatically recall her name. Now, you need to link her surname, which is a Heathcote. This time you make a link to the warm padded coat, which produces heat. It's a heath coat, but it's heat coat. And so the first association that springs to mind is Celia is still in the courtroom, holding her document with the seal, but now wrapped up in her name and wrapped up in her warm padded coat. Notice that this time the surname is linked without action rather than an object. Now, think of an old association with heath coat. Let's try another example. Say you meet a guy called Rodney Black who has a way of talking and reminds me of a doctor beside bedside manner. Your brain immediately takes advantage of this thought and conjures up a mental picture of Rodney as a doctor in a hospital. The next time you find a way to link and linking him his name up with the hospital, the first thing that comes into your head is to image Rodney examining closely of an x-ray of a patient's knee that has a metal rod fitted in it that thinks that links rod and knee. Rodney. The final step is to link the surname black by visualizing him wearing a black medic's coat instead of the usual white one habitually worn by doctors. If you are thinking that it may be easy for me to make such immediate associations but yourself with never but yourself you would never manage it, banish those thoughts now. Remember your brain already makes similar associations automatically in seconds. The only difference here is that you are consciously creating links. It's all about links. With practice, it'll become second nature. Memory foods. It is vital to eat healthy diet in a healthy diet. If we wish to keep our memory in full working, foods rich in vitamins A, C, and E, such as orange, red peppers, have been shown to aid memory recall. Oily fish, such as salmon, are another rich source of nutrients, good for the brain. Try to eat oily fish at least twice a week. Difficult names. When it comes to difficult names, so far we've looked at making associations with the straightforward names. Now, what if you're introduced to somebody who has a long name or a name that's difficult to pronounce? Well, the same principles apply. All you have to do is simply break the name into syllables or manageable parts. Take the name such as Royson, pronounced Rasheen. Take a name such as Rasheen. Let's assume that the new female's acquaintance looks like a police officer. Her name is Royson Rasheen Boyle. And so you imagine her rushing to catch a criminal. Then you include the surname Boyle and you can visualize rush, rushing, carrying her breakfast and a boiled egg. What if the person to whom you just introduced was called Ciaran, pronounced Kieran, Kieran O'Grady. His name is Kieran O'Grady. The first impression of him is he might look like a chief or a chef. He might look like a mental, Im you might find a mental image of Ciaran turning the key to unlock the kitchen door at the restaurant where he works. Then to include his surname, you visualize him making gravy, which sounds similar to Gray D. Let's look at some examples. 
We meet someone who you think looks like a teacher. She turns out to be called Carmelita Rosado. First, the, you imagine her in a school cafeteria having lunch with her pupils. Then, because Carmelita sounds like caramel eater, you visualize her eating a caramel dessert. And to bring in her surname, Rosado, you envision her sitting at a table that has a cloth embroidered with roses. Rosado, a cloth embroidered with roses. Or say that you're introduced to a man called Zenon Rivera, who looks like a musician. Zenon sounds like Zen Nun. So you picture him in your mind's eye playing a trumpet dressed in the robes or a Zen Buddhist nun. Then, to incorporate his surname, you set the whole scene on a riverbank. Zen Riverbank. Zenon. Let's just take a moment to remind ourselves that the key to memorizing difficult names lies in breaking the name down into syllables or smaller parts. You have just been introduced to something called Oleg Kaminsky. You've been introduced to someone called Oleg Kaminsky, pronounced kem in ski And you think he looks like a banker. The first image you can draw up to Oleg sitting awkwardly at the desk of the bank, counting banknotes. He's sitting awkwardly because he has an accident and he has one leg in a cast. Then you imagine him calling out, Come in! As a new pair of skis are delivered to his office. Kinkoba Biloba can dietary supplements improve your memory? Research suggests that taking extracts of ginkgo biloba, either as a tablet or a liquid form, or a tea, can help memory function, increasing the blood flow to the brain, and always take ginkgo biloba as a part of a preparation before a memory competition. The featured link. Sometimes when we meet people, we are struck by particular physical features, such as their piercing blue eyes or sticking ears or a long nose. We can't help but notice something that they wear, unusual glasses, multicolored sweaters, rings on every finger. To use this type of memorable characteristic in my technique, it's called the feature link. Think of feature links. Let me explain how it works. Say you meet a woman called Angela Marshall. The thing you notice immediately about her is that she's wearing a striking pair of glasses. They are wing-shaped, so they create an association between her name and her face, and imagine a little angel, Angela, on one wing of the glasses. To incorporate her surname, then you mentally place Marshall badge on her other wing of the glasses. Then, every time you think of this image of Angela, her name will automatically spring to mind. Angela Marshall. Here are some more examples. Let's assume that you are introduced to a guy called Marcus and has prominent eyebrows. To link his first name with his face, you imagine Marcus standing in front of a mirror, marking on his eyebrows with a makeup pencil. Now, you need to work in his surname, which is Bishop. The first name that springs to mind, mental pictures, is Marcus wearing a bishop's mitre or robe. So, you now imagine him in this outfit, marking his eyebrows. Alternatively, Let's say that you are introduced to a businesswoman called Penny Winters, who happens to be wearing leather trousers. To link her first name with her face, you imagine her sitting on a sofa wearing leather trousers using a giant pen to draw flowers on the knees. Pen knee. Now you need to link her surname, Winters, and to do this simply by visualizing snow falling all around her. So she has the leather pants with a pen drawing on her knee because her name is Penny in winters, it's snowing all around her. Evocative scents. By burning scented candles, you're using certain aromatherapy oils. You can increase the powers of the recall. This is bath time memory enhancers. Sprinkle a few drops of lemon, basil, sandalwood, essential oils into your bath water. Breathe slowly and relax. Then close your eyes and revisit your most pleasant memories. Here and now. Another useful technique that is often used is here and now, which works by associating someone whose name you wish to remember with someone you already know at the same of the same name. You mentally import this person you already know into this person's surroundings to help establish the name link, the here and now, the name link with your new acquaintance. Confused? Well, don't worry. Let's just have a look at these examples. I'll show you how the technique works. Picture yourself at a party you introduced to a woman named Maria, who is drinking an exotic blue cocktail as she chats with her hostess. The To memorize her name, you first consider whether you know anyone else within the same name. Then you suddenly recall a work colleague who is also called Maria. Wonderful! Then you conjure up a mental image of your colleague Maria and in the same place with her there at the party, holding a similar drink and chatting with the hostess. Once your brain has made that association between the two Marias, you'll be able to recall your new acquaintance name whenever you need to remember it. 
You now need to memorize your new acquaintance's surname, which is Wallace. To do this, you must think up a way of linking the surname vividly to the party. If you break the surname down, you must take two words, wall and then lace, so you will not use them as a basis for your association. You could then imagine your colleague Maria still at the party, but now sitting on a wall made of lace. This image is all more memorable because it's so surreal. Let's try another example. Imagine you meet somebody called Hugh Greenway. At a conference, he's seen rather bland and none of other and none of the other techniques that you have learned so far seem to be working appropriately with the memorizing of his name. So, you try to think of someone with the same name and eventually you come up with your Uncle Hugh. And you mentally transport Uncle Hugh to the conference and picture him sitting in the corner at the strip of the green, which reminds you of Green Way, Carpet, conversing an animatedly, animated, animatedly with other delegates. The fact that you're taciturn Uncle Hugh is the last person you would imagine chatting away with strangers is irrelevant. The sheer improbability of the scene makes it more memorable. Memory and sleep. Getting enough rest is vital if we wish to have a good memory. While we are asleep, the brain consolidates the events of the day. Try to pre-sleep, breathe meditation to relax you into a slumber. Close your eyes and take a deep, slow breath for five minutes. Try to make each complete breath last for a slow count of ten seconds or to the count of 10. Practice, practice makes perfect. We now have covered five methods of memorizing names and faces. Although it's likely that you will find some easier than others, it's worth practicing them all. Some techniques work better than others to a certain circumstance. And even the methods you'll find difficult at first will work well if you just persevere and practice. One, two, three, four, five. Total recall. Here's a summary of what we have learned so far. When you meet somebody new, asking yourself these questions will help you decide which technique is likely to be the most useful in memorizing their name. Remember that your objective is to find a link between the instinctive, the instinctive association you make about the person and their name. A link. Studies find and listen carefully to the name when you are introduced. Does their name remind you of a place? Does the person remind you of anyone familiar, such as a family member or a friend or a celebrity? What kind of trade or profession do you think the person might work in? Does this person have a particularly striking feature or an appearance? Do you know anyone else who happens to have the same name? Always listen to your instinctive, to your instinct when deciding which method of, of linking the same name, of linking the name and the face is appropriate for the circumstances. Whichever technique you decide to use, build up a vivid and detailed and mental picture as you can. The more bizarre or surreal the image, the more memorable it'll be. Memory Meditation To help you get the most out of memory techniques, before you practice or try this meditation boost concentration, choose, close your eyes and slow your breathing. Visualize a white line floating just behind your eyes. Watch this light shrink as you breathe in and expand as you breathe out. Focus in this way for five minutes. The journey method. You know how to memorize individual people you meet. But what happens if you need to remember the names of a list of people who say will be attending an important meeting or reception? This is not as difficult as it sounds because I've devised a tried and tested technique for remembering long lists. It's called the journey method. The journey method, here's how it works. Think of a journey that you know well, such as your daily walk to the station or your route to drive the child, the children to school. Mentally, you recall the journey as you do, so identify the memorable fixed stages that you pass along in which, in order, you come to them. For example, the park is on the corner shop, then the flower stall, and so on. Mentally, walk through the journey several times to fix the, to fix the stages in your mind. To memorize a list of people, place one at each of the stages. Start by looking for a connection between the person's name and the particular stage of the journey. Then, link the name with the place as vividly as you can. Let's look at the few examples. Say your first stage is a police station that you name you wish, that the name you wish to place there is Robert Walker. The first mental picture that comes to your mind is of a tall, hooded robber holding his bag of stolen goods as he walks up and steps into the police station, accompanied by two burly officers. Make the image come alive by imagining 
as much detail as possible. For example, I visualize the clothes of the robber wearing the jeans and navy blue hooded sweatshirt. In my mind's eye, I see one of the policemen answering a call on his radio as he approaches the entrance to the police station. And I hear the sirens of police cars as they return to the park. Return to park up the station's yard. Now, try to think of your own image for Robert Walker at the police station. Let's now move on to the second stage of the journey, which is the public telephone booth. The t public telephone booth is the name of the person is Marion Armstrong. This name immediately conjures up the mind of the vision of the bride because the first part of the Marion, the Marion sounds like Mary. My bridge is wearing a traditional long white dress and veil. Now, I link, then I link in the surname, Armstrong, by imagining the bride standing in the phone booth exercising her very muscular strong arm using the phone receiver as a dumbbell up and down up and down her right arm goes then she changes over to pump the other iron her left arm you might you might feel that this image is rather tongue-in-cheek but it is perfectly acceptable to introduce the element of humor if it helps you associate your memorable more me if it helps you associations more memorable now it's your turn again to think of a vivid and detailed association as you can between Marion Armstrong and the telephone booth. Memory action. It's time to put your newly acquired skills of using this journey method into practice. I would now like you to memorize the following list of 10 celebrities in order using your own 10 stages mental journey and allow yourself 10 minutes. Number one, Nicole Kidman. Number two, Bill Gates. Number three, Indira Gandhi. Charlie Chaplin, Greta Garbo, Al Gore, Venus Williams, Fred Astaire, Jennifer Lopez, and 10th, Andy Warhol. Now, without looking back at the numbered list on page 104, rearrange the last celebrities below in the order. You memorize them mentally, walk through the journey recalling association in the celebrities as you do so. Fred Astaire, Indiri Gandhi, Andy Warhol. Nicole Kidman, Charlie Chaplin, Jennifer Lopez, Bill Gates, Venus Williams, Al Gore, and Greta Garbo. How did you get on? With practice, you should easily be able to recall the order of all of them. Here's another list of celebrities to practice with. Number one, Judy Garland, Richard Gere, Hillary Clinton, Denzel Washington, Drew Barrymore, Henry Kissinger, Cameron Diaz, Colin Powell, Oprah Winfrey, Frank Sinatra. Build a stock of journeys. Once you've mastered the journey method, and you master the journey method, you'll be able to memorize long lists of names of people as it's easier to remember several short journeys rather than one long journey. I suggest you start by thinking up several journeys of saying, say, 10 stages. Each can expand them to, say, 25 stages when you get more confident. Try the journey at least 10 stages of 10 people. The golden rule of memory is this. Try to repeat and recall any memorizations you make at least five times a day to ensure that you are firmly embedding it into your memory. For example, if you are using the journey method, mentally revisit each stage of your journey in the same order as you first made it, recruiting fully each association as you go along. Expand the picture. As you become more proficient at linking names to faces, you can memorize more information about someone you meet by introducing extra elements in the mental picture. For example, if we return to Robert Walker, see page 100-101, you can memorize the fact that his hobby is fishing by imagining his swag bag being full of pungent fish. Let's look at more examples. Earlier, say 74, we talked about Angela Marshall, whose most striking feature is her wing-shaped glasses. You may now wish to note that she runs her own knitwear business and that she is a teeter she's a Tito Taylor and add that these extra pieces of information the image you imagine Angela sitting in her cottage knitting her knitwear business in a cottage industry a cup of hot tea steaming on the table in front of her or take your new acquaintance Ciaran O'Grady you thought you looked like a who look you thought he looked like a chef say you now need to remember that he is an identical twin he speaks French you imagine See Aaron unlocking the kitchen door and making gravy before, but now it's time. This time, he's accompanied by a second identical See Aaron who is preparing French beans. In the World Memory Championships, there's an event called Names and Faces, in which the contestants have to commit to memory and then recall as many faces and many names that go with the specific faces as possible. If you would like to see whether you have a world-class potential in this event, try the following test, which is based on world-class memory championships events. Gather together photographs of 99 people from magazines, newspapers, and cut them out. 
write each person's for and surname on the back of their photograph. Don't choose famous people whose names you already know. That would give an unfair advantage. Spend 15 minutes memorizing the faces and their corresponding names. Taking good note of how the names are spelled and then shuffle photographs, looking at again each them turn by turn to recall the full name, what goes with the face. Write down your answers. Even if you can only remember the first name or the surname, write it down as, as you will still count. When you have finished, check the written answers against the names that you wrote on the back of the photographs. Award yourself two points. Who got the whole name right? One point if you recalled only one part of the name correctly. You must also deduct half a point for every spelling error. Now, how did you do? If you had to score 50 plus points with 25 or more correct full names, you'd have a championship potential. So, keep practicing. Maybe we'll meet at the next World Memory Championship. Acknowledgements. The author's acknowledgements. I wish to thank the creative team for Duncan Baird. Can't remember if it's Susan or Sharon. Could have sworn that you knew that face. Well, never fear. Here is here. Help is here. Inside you'll find a fun and easy trick to remembering names and faces. This book is handy and you'll never forget again. The eight-time world memory champion Dominic O'Brien uses used to be forgetful like the rest of us. Now he reveals the secret that got him banned from Las Vegas casinos that earned him the Grand Master of Memory and Brain of the year's awards in his native United Kingdom. Let Dominic O'Brien's memory magic work for you. Also available, never forget a number or a date. Never forget a name or a face. Dominic O'Brien.